right next to the doors leading out to that huge balcony space. So these are an amazing opportunity to pay for an inside facing cabin, but basically have a gigantic like shared balcony space just outside your door. Honestly, a boardwalk or a central park facing balcony is also not private at all. So this is kind of a great budget hack. Welcome back on board the Royal Caribbean Symphony of the Seas, one of the largest cruise ships in the world and one of Royal Caribbean's famous Oasis class of ships. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I travel all around the world to popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it's like to be there. I'm here in my standard balcony cabin on deck seven there's gonna be a video tour about this cabin as well it's a standard balcony cabin on Royal Caribbean it's nice enough and I was lucky enough to get to do a cabin crawl on this trip as well so I got to tour some of the great big suites and I got to see some of the other cabin styles and while I've been walking around this ship for the past 10 days, I realized that just down the hall from us, there are some inside cabins that are away from where most of the inside cabins are on the Oasis class. And these are, as far as inside cabins go, probably the best ones to book. And I guess I'm gonna call them boardwalk facing inside cabins, even though they do not have a window, they do not have a view of anything, but there are certain things about the location of them that make them very appealing. So I'm just gonna take the camera down the hallway here and show you what I mean. Wait a second, this is Morgan from the future and I just wanted to encourage you to keep watching in the video because after I filmed this part that I filmed on the ship, I actually found some more of these really really special inside cabins and also some quote unquote promenade view cabins that actually have a view of the boardwalk and some other really special location perks. And I didn't know about that while I was filming this on the ship. So I filmed some more when I got home and I just wanted to make sure that you keep watching so you see that too. And now back to deck seven. Okay, just to give you a little bit of perspective here about where we are on the ship. This is where the deck seven elevators are. And if I just turn right over here, I'm talking about these four cabins right here in this row. It's cabin 671 and then 673, 675, and then the last one is 677. And on the other side, by the way, hi Susan, uh, we have 271, 273, cabin 275, and cabin 277. Facing back the other way now, so like towards the front of the ship. Now, one of the great things about this location of cabins is the elevators are right around the corner here, which is very convenient, but one deck up is the entrance to Central Park, and one deck down is the boardwalk and the upper level of the Royal Promenade. And this is just a super convenient location because you're gonna be taking the elevator up to the pool and to the buffet anyways, and that's just around the corner. And then the boardwalk and the Royal Promenade, the public spaces that you're gonna be spending a lot of time in most likely, are right here around the corner also, just one deck up and one deck down. Right up there, that's where I was just standing. That's deck seven. And like I said, one deck down, and you're right on the boardwalk. If I turn around, you'll see this is the upper level of the Royal Promenade, which is an area where also a lot of the action happens on board. One thing about staying in an inside cabin that is obviously kind of a bummer, kind of a setback, is that you don't have any sunlight or fresh air. So having an inside cabin that's really close to sunlight and fresh air is a huge bonus. And I wanna show you now how far you have to walk to get to Central Park. So this is the furthest of the cabins that we're talking about, which is 677 on the one side. And like I said, I've just kind of walked here Imagine you get up in the morning, put on your slippers and a robe, maybe you're in your PJs or whatever. You go right around the corner and then you just have to go up these stairs. You can admire the artwork here. I know that's one nice thing about Royal Caribbean ships. Is there's always art in the stairways. It's not only Royal Caribbean ships, other ships do it too, but there's some cool art on Royal, in my opinion. We're up here on deck eight now. 
And you'll see, you just go around the corner, past some noisy kids, and right through this door. I mean, it's literally taken, what, 45 seconds to leave the cabin, come up here, and be here, outside in Central Park. I just came out that door right there that those people are going through. So yeah, 45 seconds, come up here, grab this table, and this is like your own little place. And there's places to get coffee and breakfast here in Central Park. You can be here even quicker than the buffet, and it's like your unofficial balcony. Of course, there's other places to sit up here in Central Park, but I just was looking for the closest place to those cabins down there. Okay, going back here around the corner to where these cabins are located again, not only is it fantastic that you're right around the corner from the elevators and one deck up is the fresh air in Central Park, but another thing that's really special is what's down there at the end of this hallway. I'm not gonna lie, this isn't as close as Central Park. It's a little bit of a walk, but it's the end of your hallway, which is closer than it is for a lot of other people. By the way, this is 7702, the cabin that we stayed in and that I already did the room tour of. And moving on down this hallway here, right at the end on both sides is this public outdoor space. That's the door I just came out of. And not only is the rock climbing wall right here, which yeah, it is what it is, but you basically have your own private entrance to the aqua theater to see the amazing outdoor aqua theater shows that happen on these Oasis class ships. I had to go to the other side because there's a bunch of kids getting ready for the rock climbing wall there. And I didn't want to film all of them, but that is like, a shared balcony area that you have at the end of deck seven. And over here on the other side, there's a door you would come out of. And in the mornings, in the evenings, when the rock climbing wall is not happening and there's no aqua show, this is also, like I said, just kind of like a big shared open balcony area. It's amazing. There's chairs hidden around the corner here. So places to sit. This is an amazing secret little oasis here on this gigantic ship, and it's really close to these cabins. I'm back on the other side again now, and I wanted to show you that that's the door that you come out of. This is the balcony area on this side as well. And if you want an even more exclusive space and a great view, you can head down this stairway you go down one floor, a little bit forward, go down one more floor, and not only is that where the doggy poop area is, but it's this area at the back of the ship. So not only do I think a lot of people never make it here, but I know there's a lot of wake watchers out there and this is just an amazing space to hang out. All right, so let's go back and look at the deck plan for deck seven again, because I wanna show you. You can see these are the cabins I was talking about, and it wasn't until I got home that I realized that there are four, yeah, just four cabins in the same place up on deck eight, which would mean if you book one of these cabins, you don't even have to go up a flight of stairs to get into Central Park and go to that little table area. Of course, I know there are also inside cabins at the front of the ship that are really close to Central Park too, but I feel like these eight cabins on deck seven and the four on deck eight would be in a much quieter location than these cabins in like this big block of insides that are close to Central Park. What do you think? Would it be quieter here or no difference? I just feel like with this block of inside cabins, if you're staying right there by the entrance, there's gonna be people walking in and out all the time. And when people get out of the elevator and when people are going to the elevator, I feel like that's when they're being the loudest. I don't know, what do you think? And wait, there's more. When I was walking through the ship and then looking at the deck plans, I also found out that there's a cabin category called Promenade View Interior. So usually if you have an ocean view room, that means you have a window looking out to the ocean. And there are some cabins on these Oasis class ships that have 
a window, but you're looking to the inside of the ship. And at the back of deck seven, there are also eight cabins in this category with an outside view of the boardwalk. And these cabins are literally right next to the doors leading out to that huge balcony space. So these are an amazing opportunity to pay for an inside facing cabin, but basically have a gigantic like shared balcony space just outside your door. Honestly, a boardwalk or a central park facing balcony is also not private at all. So this is kind of a great budget hack. Just for your orientation, this is the back of the boardwalk and those large round windows above the bar are these cabins. On the one side, there's actually the children's climbing structure right underneath it. So that might be kind of weird because it even stretches across the one cabin's window. I think I definitely would try to avoid that cabin. As we were getting ready to disembark, I also got to film inside one of these cabins and check out the view. I could totally imagine staying in one of these cabins, paying the price for basically an inside cabin, but having this view and also knowing I just need to go out my door and then open one door and then I have a huge outdoor space that I can go to anytime I want. Yes, it's not the same as having your own private ocean facing balcony, but it's still a little more optimized than staying in a standard inside or ocean view cabin, if you ask me. I'm happy I could bring you this information today. One of the things I like to do here on the very own official travel guides is not only entertain people while traveling around the world, but when I see something that could be helpful or useful to other people who are trying to figure out how to spend their travel budget, I like to bring that to you too. And I feel like this is a really good, uh, this was a really good opportunity to do that. So I hope I can help you plan your trip on an Oasis class ship. And I definitely will consider staying, especially in one of these boardwalk facing inside cabins. I definitely could consider staying there in the future myself. I'm gonna let you see the outro that I filmed on the ship in just a minute, but before I go, let me remind you that I also wrote a book called Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship filled with fun, funny, crazy stories of uh, things that have really happened to me while traveling around the world, including having to go to the medical center and get stitches on a cruise ship. It was not the Symphony of the Seas, it was the Harmony of the Seas. But if you wanna read about all those fun things and maybe get a smile on your face and help support what I do here on the Very Unofficial Travel Guides, please check out Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship, available on Amazon now. And now back to Morgan from the past. One thing I don't know is if the other Oasis class ships are built the same way. I've been on the Harmony now and just recently on the Wonder and there are certain differences in the larger public spaces, smaller differences, bigger differences, some differences that make me think, why would they change that? If you are thinking of booking an inside cabin, try to get one of these because I know those are the ones I'm gonna look for if I'm on a small budget and want to cruise with an Oasis class ship. I hope this helped you out. If you have a cruise coming up, check out all the other videos here on the very unofficial travel guides. Many of them are about cruise ships. Please consider subscribing before you go. Press that thumbs up and let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Have a good one, everybody. See you later.